Uh, let's talk about what's happening in the House of Commons today after PMQs. Uh, MPs are going to vote on an SNP motion calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Both the government and Labour are also tabling their own amendments, with Keir Starmer calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in a bid to stave off a Labour backbench rebellion. Meanwhile, the Conservatives have uh, tabled their own amendment calling for an immediate humanitarian pause and backing Israel's right to self-defence. So, what's the difference between all of this and... Isn't it all a little bit playing politics with Palestinian civilians' lives? Joining me right now is Ian Blackford. He's the uh, Scottish National Party MP for Ross, Sky and Lockover, and is their former Westminster leader. Good morning to you, Ian. Long time no speak. Yeah, good morning, Joya. Pleasure to be on with you. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us. So, OK, what is the point of the SNP motion? You've got a rare opposition day uh, uh, debate opportunity. What is the point of calling for this ceasefire? Because I'm not aware, with all due respect to the SNP leadership, um, that, that Hamas terrorists holding 134 Israeli hostages right now um, and that the Israeli Defence Forces and the Israeli uh, government are, are sitting there waiting to find out what the SNP think about their war. So what's the point of it all? But of course, we're all members of Parliament. And what, what I want to see this afternoon, Julia, is Parliament coming together. One of the things I suppose I've been most proud of over the last couple of years has been the unity of purpose that we've had right across the chamber in dealing with Putin, dealing with Ukraine, speaking with one clear voice, uh, defending our friends in Ukraine, making sure that we're supporting them as much as we can. Of course, we all recoil at the horrors of the attack of the 7th of October. Hamas are a terrorist organisation and they should be dealt with. I think our issue is that you don't deal with the Hamas problem by seeing the, sad to say, 29,000 civilians now losing their lives in Gaza. Innocent civilians should not be paying a price for this. And I think it's important both in this parliament, but right across the world, that we show leadership. And remember what parliament has voted for in the past, is the support of a two-state solution. We need now to show that we would recognise that we will never deal with this uh, sufficiently until we can get to a long-term peaceful resolution. That means a two-state solution. But in order to get there, we've got to stop the attacks that we're now seeing on Rafa. The civilians are paying a heavy price for this. The fact that so many people in Gaza are starving. Um, the fact that not just the 29,000 that have lost their lives, but the, the near 70,000 that have been injured. So I think there's a humanitarian reason for us to come together. I don't want to see anybody playing politics with this in any party. And I really would appeal to colleagues okay. today to come okay. together, to do the right thing, to recognise all of us should be speaking up for those that need our support in Gaza right now. Well, other people who need well, our support in Gaza, Gaza right now. Gaza right now. There seems to be a bit of feedback on your screen there. I don't know if you could turn the volume down at your end. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, the other people who need support would, of course, be the 134 Israeli hostages being held by Hamas. And Israeli forces have said, it's very, very clear, uh, they are trying to get their hostages back. They are trying to defeat completely, end of uh, Hamas as a terrorist organisation, as a threat to them. A two-state solution doesn't work with Hamas or any other terrorist organisation in charge of the neighbouring country of one of those two states, which is, which is what effectively would continue to happen if, if Hamas are not completely defeated. It is Hamas who have chosen to put their military uh, bases and the, uh, missiles and their tunnels uh, over and underneath um, civilian structures, schools, hospitals, apartment buildings. Um, it was Hamas that chose to attack Israel. Um, peace... Peace could be happening right now if Hamas laid down their arms, if Hamas handed back the hostages and stopped using their own people, Palestinian civilians, as, as, a, as, as, as a human shield. Um, shouldn't the demand simply be on Hamas to end the war that they started on October the 7th? Julia, we all recognise that Hamas are a terrorist organisation. We want them removed, we want them dealt with, we want those in the Hamas organisation to face justice as they should at the, the international court. Uh, we've got an impasse at the moment and we know that there's a very real threat to Rafa. And let's recognise there are a million and a half people in that city at the moment. There's nowhere else to go. And we know that the attacks by the Israeli Defence Forces have now started. And I think, we've, therefore, we've got that responsibility to speak out. We, we want Israel to be able to, to be at peace. We want peace and security across the region. And I think everything that's happened over the course of the last few months has got to be a wake-up call to all of us, right across the international community, that we have to step in. We have to offer that hand of friendship to Israel. Of course, 
Israel must have security on its borders. Well, is that because, but with all due respect, sure Ian, that... with all due respect, I mean, everyone could agree with everything you say, but these are platitudes. It's like people saying Israel has the right to self-defence, but they mustn't kill civilians in, in Gaza. The reality is the civilians in Gaza are, have been placed in harm's way by Hamas. Mm -hmm. Hamas want people in Palestine. They love seeing children die. That's what that that's that's great PR for them. I don't think well, we I, don't. We don't no, no, do we it. don't. No, all <laughs> right-thinking people want there to be peace and not for a single civilian to die. However, you know as well as I do that in every single war in the history of humankind, children, innocent people have died. It is a horrible, horrible fact. They died when British Army is involved, when the US Army is involved, when every army is involved. So we're yeah, now saying 29,000 is too many. I agree with you. What number would be acceptable? Well, you, you don't want to see civilians ever being put into into danger. But so if, was every no, that, so okay. So from the but, moment but, but, that Julie, Israel but, went but, into but, Gaza, but, are you saying that was but, too much? Because when you're saying they have a right to self-defence, then then you're which of is it? Do. Look, I you know, you're not going to get any disagreement from me that we need to deal with Hamas. There are terrorist organisations. Well, how do we deal, deal with them other than with move. weapons? Then you oh, can't bring you know, terrorists the the day, to the table. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Look, no, they have to be. They have to be isolated. But there are. There, there is more. Isolated. Than they need opinion. to be killed. But, but look. But there is more than an Arab opinion that we need to work with to make sure that they can be isolated. That can be removed. But let, let me give the example of 2014, which was the last time there was a an uprising over over Gaza. David Cameron was the then prime minister, and he said this in 2014. An immediate and unconditional humanitarian ceasefire, recognising that the situation in Gaza is intolerable. That was the case in 2014. That's what David Cameron said then. What I'm arguing today, what we've been arguing in the SNP, is exactly the same as that. Let's show leadership. But Let's make sure that Hamas pay a price for the terrorism. But we need to stand up for those in Gaza. OK, that are now but, in but I think you'll have to agree. Conflict. That what happened on October the seventh is a game changer for the I I Israeli Absolutely. people. Can I can Absolutely. I ask you? Know, what is the None difference? Of us will what happened Ian Blackford, what is the difference between the SNP motion calling for an immediate ceasefire, Labour calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, and the Tories in their amendment calling for an Im immediate humanitarian pause? Do you know what the difference is between those three things? I mean, you are talking about words and you're talking about semantics, but I think it is really important that we can come together. I, I suspect the Labour amendment won't be taken. Uh, I hope the House can come together. Um, you know, we'll have votes this afternoon. We'll see what will happen. I, I, I suspect that we will at least end up in a better place than we are today. But we should be unequivocally saying now that there should not be an attack on, on Rafa. Let's make sure that we can work with the international community. Okay. Let's work with, with, with the Arab states in particular to bring a resolution to this, and a resolution not just for the short term and the long term, and that means the removal of Hamas to do that. OK. Um, a lot of people are saying that this isn't about the innocents in civ uh, civilians in Palestine. This is actually about the SNP trying to get one over on Labour and expose the weakness of Keir Starmer's leadership. We know back in November we had 56 Labour MPs voting uh, to support an SNP motion in defiance of a Labour whip, uh, 10 resignations from the front bench, that your, your party is simply trying to push those divisions again, making life difficult for Keir Starmer. Yes, you're entitled to do, but this is actually playing politics rather than really any message of support to the Palestinian civilians. Julia, you know me better than that. And the last thing I want to do is play politics. I want the House to come together. I've given the example of what we've done over Ukraine. I don't want differences across this House, whether it be with Labour or Conservative. Let's stand up as humanitarians. Let's have a united voice that we can put pressure on our colleagues in the international community through the UN to get a ceasefire. Let's all of us work together to that, uh, to that end. OK. Um, how do you think this vote's going to go? Because, again, everything's up to the common speaker, Lindsay Hoyle. Uh, he gets to decide... I think he's having a meeting, I think, round about now, deciding what's going to be on the order paper. So they have the SNP motion. The question is whether or not we get the, the, the Tory amendment and or the Labour amendment. That could, of course, put the Labour in a bigger bind. Oh, this, is a, this is obviously all based on procedure. And what would yeah. normally happen with an opposition day that he would normally strike out the Labour amendment... But We'll see what happens. Um, if, if he does strike out the Labour amendment, what will happen this afternoon is the SNP motion will be put and the House will vote on that. I'm asking the House to do so. Yeah. Uh, if that is passed, um, then, of course, the government has the option of putting down its amendment if it so chooses. 
And I hope we can come together and have that okay. unity of purpose. That um, in terms about. of coming together, do you agree with uh, what Prince William had to say in his expression of profound concern and calls for peace? He's been criticised by some former I... ministers and others saying that actually he's, he's meddling in politics. He's supposed to be, as a royal prince, above the fray. I would never criticise any member of the of the royal family, but I recognise the right. Why not? Why not? The... Are they above I'm criticism? Over... I've never I've never done it, and I'm, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it now. But I think he's got a right to speak. You never criticise Prince his... Andrew. Um, I I haven't got into in, into the but let, 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 let's deal with the issue that you raise the question that you raise. I think he has a right to speak out on a humanitarian basis, which is which is what he's done. OK, Ian Blackford, really appreciate you joining it. Great, great to have you on the show. He's, of course, the SNP MP, former Westminster leader in the Commons.